Hello, YouTube. Hell, Sticky Rocks AGF here. Um, you know, uh, I don't do these kind of videos, like, at all, ever. Um, but, you know, I think it's finally time. This is going to be my first ever rant video. Um, you know, being that Sonic Adventure, the original, um, is my favorite Sonic game of all time, and, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a Sonic fan, and, you know, I've said it before, and I will say it again, I am not a fanboy of Sonic, I'm not a Sonic fanboy, I'm a Sonic fan, those are two different things, um, I'm gonna, you know, define a fanboy, there's two different types of Sonic fanboys, there is the Sonic fanboy who, uh, only will play the 2D Genesis games. You're not a Sonic fan if those are the only if those are the only Sonic games you play. Uh, those are great games. I'm not going to take anything away from the Genesis games except Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I hate that game, but um, you know, those are those are good games. You know, they're nice, they're fun. Uh, but you know that makes you a fanboy if those are the only ones that you will play. Um, you know that that's just being a fanboy. Um, also, being ignorant, I'm going to say that, it's also being ignorant, and, um, you're also a Sonic fanboy, if you will, you know, needlessly eat up, you know, any anything Sonic, I mean, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to sit in this video and say that, you know, there's no such thing, every Sonic game is a perfect 10 out of 10, and, you know, triple A best games of all time, and I'm not going to say that, and if you, you know, say that, and you don't think that there's problems with these games, well, you know, you're a fanboy too, I mean, there are, but... Being the Sonic Adventure series is probably my favorite part of the Sonic games. Um, you know, I've had to deal with a lot of straight-up bullshit uh, where people just assume that these games are trash or, um, you know, that they're glitchy, there's camera problems, and, you know, they suck, and all, all this, um, you know, totally overblown, complete bullshit, uh, that, you know, that's just straight fanboy nonsense. Uh, you know, like the Sonic games, the original ones had bugs or glitches. Uh, you'd be you'd be hard pressed to find a game that does not have one bug or glitch in it. That's just that just comes with the territory. And, you know, every game, even the you know Super Mario Brothers, widely hailed as one of the best games of all time. Perfect? No. Has bugs? Has glitches? You know, all of them do. Ocarina of Time. There's a there's a gigantic list of bugs and glitches in the game. You know, with bad camera controls, and, you know. So what? What's what's so different for Sonic Adventure? Why do people, um, you know, put this sort of thing on Sonic on the Sonic Adventure series, but they won't, you know, give Mar uh, Mario sixty four bad scores because it's, you know, it's got bugs and glitches, and you know the camera control sucks. You know, and someone say, "Well, you're comparing a game from the N sixty four to a game on the Dreamcast." We'll see. There's the thing: is those two games are very similar in one aspect. Super Mario 64 was the first 3D Mario game, so you know it had those problems. And Sonic Adventure was also it was the first 3D Sonic game. So yeah, they were from different generations, but it was still the first time Sega had ever made a 3D Sonic game. So you can't expect it to be the perfect shining example of you know 3D glory. Because it's not, and I'm not going to claim that this game is perfect with no flaws. Um, what I'm going to talk about with Sonic Adventure 1 here, uh, just for the little bit, is... First off, the game is not nearly as buggy as people make it out to be. Um, people say, oh, I fell through, I, you can't even take it two steps without falling through the floor. You know, I've been playing this game for years, and years, and years, and that happens to me maybe like two times out of like every 70 or 80 times I play a level um, you know probably more than it should happen you know that's still pretty you know but that's not like people make the game out like it's some sort of broken unplayable mess like where you take one step no matter where you are and you'll fall through the world you know and you'll die um, you know they talk about glitches where you the collision detection, like they say they just act like they get hit by stuff that they're not even near. I've never had that happen to me, personally, never, in all my years of playing Sonic Adventure, and it being my favorite game of all time. I've never had that happen to me. Um, you know, the camera, 
I had no problem with the camera. Um, you know, you can rotate it around just fine. I've never had one problem with that camera. Uh, in fact, I had a lot more trouble playing Ocarina of Time and um, Mario 64 because of their cameras than I did um, due to camera problems from Sonic Adventure. Sometimes the camera can be, you know, a bit wonky, but, you know, you can adjust the camera with the triggers and it's it's fine. It really is. It's just another overblown problem. Um, the level design is great. This is per probably the best Sonic level design. And that's something else that I'm going to get a lot of hate for. And I'm probably going to lose all my subscribers for this video. But, you know, I really don't care. It's just something that's been on my mind for a long time. And, um, you know, it's just... The level design is great. Sure, I don't... I'm not a big fan of the big levels, but... It doesn't matter. They're not bad. You know, you can play them just fine. Um, do they belong in a Sonic game? Up for debate. But no one you know, bitches and complains when Mario does stuff that wouldn't be in a Mario game. You know, people seem to give Sonic a lot of a harder time than they do Mario. Uh, you know, people will rate Mario games perfectly, you know, no matter what problems they have. They have always give Sonic, they're a lot harder on Sonic. For some reason they think Sonic is supposed to be this, you know, holy Jesus Christ sort of franchise or something. I don't know what kind of expectations people have for Sonic games. It's, I don't understand. Like, and then you get a good game like Sonic Colors or Sonic 4, and then, you know, this is less with Sonic Colors and more so with Sonic 4. They say, well, you're not making the game, you know, just like the old, exactly like the good old-fashioned Genesis games. Well, you know, they weren't trying to make a Genesis game. They were trying to make a Genesis-inspired Sonic. It was not supposed to be, you know, the Genesis game, like, perfect clone of the Genesis games. It was supposed to be, like, a throwback to the Genesis games in a similar style, but updated. Uh, you know? And they did that. They did that just fine. All the stuff that people bitch about, like, there's no momentum in the game. You know, they haven't watched any speedruns of this game on YouTube. You can go on here and you can find people beating levels in, like, 30 seconds, and they get so much momentum, and they get so much speed, and it's just crazy and anyone who says that this game doesn't that game doesn't have momentum is just bullshit i don't it's total bullshit and I, I don't even know you know i don't know what people want out of sonic games you know we get a great looking demo like sonic generations and people just bitch about that the game was beautiful the music was great you know the um everything was great about Sonic Generations, there was, oh, he jumps weird, he jumps like Sonic, I mean, I've been a fan of Sonic, you know, so I've played all the games, I love all the Sonic games, it really wasn't that noticeable, I mean, yeah, it, it did feel a little stiff, but people were acting like he just, like, jumped up and then, like, automatically fell back down to the ground like there was, like, ten times normal gravity on him. Or something, or that he, he was hard to control. No, I don't know what people are wanting. Because no matter what, how good of a game Sega puts out, it gets slammed in the reviews. Because people want, you know, they want Sonic the Hedgehog 3 again. Well, guess what? It's not 19, you know, 94 anymore. Games have changed. Sonic has changed. It's like Mario has changed. You know, Mario's hardly even a platformer anymore. In the same regard that Mar or that Sonic would be considered... Probably not as big of a platformer as it used to be. Play Mario 64. Play Mario Sunshine. Play Gal the Galaxy games. You know, the Galaxy games got Mario sort of back on track with, plat with more platforming. But if you play those games, they're more about exploring in 3D environments versus, you know, a platformer. Whereas, you know, if you look at Sonic Adventure, they change to where they're less about platforming, you know, and they're more about the speed aspect. And no, Sonic's not all about speed. Just like Mario's not all about exploration, there's platforming involved. But both franchises lost that that edge. And then, you know, they brought Mario back to the platforming a little bit more with uh, the Galaxy games. But they're still not pure platformers like the originals were. Just like Sonic. Mario and Sonic will probably never be pure platformers ever again. I don't see that happening, you know. Uh, gaming has changed. Platforming games were popular in the, in the early 90s. But then, you, you know, games changed. Times changed, and they're just not 
popular as much anymore. You know, you, a pure platformer won't do as good. It's got to have some sort of exploration or some, something different to make people want to play it. I mean, I still love pure platformers. I would play them. But the majority of people won't. And that's the problem. You know. These games are not bad games. None of them are. You know, a truly bad Sonic game... I don't, I don't even know of like, a Sonic game that truly deserves the hate it gets. You know, people bitch about Sonic on the Secret Rings and Sonic and the Black Knight. You play those games. If someone actually plays those games and doesn't just bitch about them, I've played them and I loved all of them. You know, Sonic and the Secret Rings was probably, you know, a good 6 or 7 out of 10. Same for Black Knight. They're not perfect, you know, 10 out of 10 games. But Sonic Unleashed, that game is easily a 9 out of 10. People just bitch about it because they don't like the new gameplay elements, but they don't bitch at Mario games when Mario games add new gameplay elements. You know, they're just experimenting with the franchise like Mario does. That's all Mario is, is an experimental franchise for Nintendo. They just throw in new shit and people eat it up like it's the best thing ever. But then you get, you know, Sonic Unleashed, which the Werehog levels are not bad. I mean, if people play God of War you know, or Dante's Inferno, or some type of game like that, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's not bad. It's, it's a solid mechanic. It was implemented well. I'm sure they could have had, you know, a better balance between the two, but it doesn't make the game like a 4 or a 5 out of 10. It really doesn't. And it's just so stupid. I don't, I don't understand it, like, at all. Sonic Heroes got bashed a lot, but, um, you know, I didn't much care for Sonic Heroes, but is it a, like a ridiculously shitty game? No, the character models suck and the engine sucks, but I mean the game's playable and it has like good music and good levels and it's an interesting concept. The same thing for Shadow the Hedgehog. Excellent concept. I love Shadow the Hedgehog, but they just ruin it by using a shitty engine. Um, you know, it's still not like a four or five out of ten. Solid seven out of ten game. You know, um, the handheld Sonics are nice, they're, they're very fun, once again, they're just like seven, they're not, they're not supposed to be these perfect holy grail of games, they're just supposed to be fun and playable, which they are, and if you can't take that, if you can't adapt to the way gaming evolves over the years, you know, then something is wrong with you as a gamer, I love the old Sonic games, I love the old Mario games, but I can appreciate how gaming has changed and how these franchises have evolved over the years and they're still very fun very playable games and anyone who who thinks that these games are unplayable unplayable or trolling I've played through Sonic Adventure 30 times you know and I've played through Sonic Adventure 2 at least 10 but I've never had game breaking glitches game, game breaking bugs for no reason if I ever had to restart my save file you know, like, you take a game like Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas, where you hear people bitching all the time, put 200 hours into the game, you, you, something happens, game-breaking glitch, you have to restart. Well, that never happened to me in Sonic Adventure, but they would re review Fallout 3 higher than Sonic Adventure, you know, even though it has game-breaking glitches and bugs. And I don't understand that. Now, Sonic 2006 is an interesting example. Um, that game, I'm gonna say it is not Sega's fault that that game turned out the way it did. Um, as you know, it was being prepared for the 15th anniversary of Sonic, and, um, there was so much pressure from fans and, like, media for them to just hurry up and release that game. And, you know, Sega, they buckled under that pressure, and they went ahead and released the game when it clearly wasn't, um, you know, finished. The game is very difficult... <laughs> That is probably the one Sonic game that, you know, deserves at least some of the hate it gets. Um, it's probably like a 5 out of 10, you know? Not not ridiculously shitty, like some people would say, but not perfect. I mean, it's clearly not perfect. Not even close to being perfect. Um, had the game, you know, had time to be fully developed, I think that, that would have been probably the best Sonic game, um, you know, of all time. It was, it was headed in that way, and it's sad that it in the way it did, but, um, you can still beat the game, that's, it's very doable, um, 
you know, it's, it's a fun game. The music's good. The level designs were, were perfect. They were spot on. But like I said, they just didn't have the development time to finish it. And um, and I was a firm believer that if they would have patched that game, that, you know, it would have fixed all of the problems. I mean, most of those problems could have been fixed easily by a patch. The loading times, you know, the bugs. And they, didn't, they wouldn't even have to have patched it all at one time. They could have just, you know, put out patches through over the course of the game. They did. They just set it out there and let it die. And, um, you know... I don't know what, really what else to say other than that, um, you know, Sega recently, you know, basically came out with uh, a statement where they said it was impossible to please all Sonic fans with one game. And that's true. Because they release a great game like Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Adventure 1 here, and people say, ugh, it's not, no matter how good the game is, they will say, it's not 2D Sonic. Sonic 3 is the best Sonic game ever. And then we'll slam it and say it's shit for no reason without even playing it. And then, you know, they'll, they'll be like, okay, well, you people who like the Genesis games, we understand that you like those games, so we'll make a Genesis-inspired game for you guys. And then they get it, and Sega, their Sega releases it, and people are like, you know, it's uh, it's not exactly like Sonic 3 and Knuckles. It's uh, the, the jumping's a little bit off, and... It's, uh, you know, a little weird, but uh, you got the homing attack in there, and we don't want that. So, Sega's like, oh, well, oh, sorry you didn't, you know, enjoy that. So, uh, you know, here we'll just, uh, we'll, you know, put the Genesis games that you love so much on Xbox Live or, you know, PSN. And then they're like, oh, you're just rehashing your old games again. There goes Sega rehashing all their old games that we bought a million times, but... Of course they're going to rehash them when that's what people tell them they want. Because they try stuff like Sonic Adventure, Sonic and the Black Knight, Sonic Unleashed, and people bitch and complain that it's not the Genesis games, so they'll release the Genesis games again, and people bitch that they're not trying new shit. When they try new shit, they bitch that they want the Genesis games, and when they get the Genesis games, they bitch that they want, you know, other shit. And it's just fucking in the cycle of stupid-ass bullshit. You know? It's just bullshit. And I'm going to go back, this is how I'm going to end this shit, by saying, what I said earlier, I am a Sonic fan, not a Sonic fanboy. I play the Sonic games because they're fun. All of them have at least some sort of fun factor that uh, make them worth my time as a gamer. I'm not a fanboy, I don't fucking worship the ground the Genesis games walk on. I don't fucking think the Genesis games suck. I don't hate new Sonic. I like all of Sonic. Because I'm a Sonic fan, a fucking fanboy. Jesus Christ, and I'm sorry, I don't normally, you know, cuss in my videos, I try not to. But this is just a layer of bullshit that is so stupid. But, I mean, people don't bitch at Mario for this shit. You know? And it's, it's amazing to me that Nintendo can do whatever the fuck they want to Mario. And be it implemented well or not. The game's like an automatic 10 out of 10 game of the year for Nintendo. But Sega tries out stuff with Sonic, and it's, Oh, it's fucking bullshit. It's not the fucking old shit. It ain't fucking good anymore. Fucking 4, 3, 2. <laughs> and I can make a whole separate video on my rant for Duke Nukem. People raping that game in the reviews when it was never supposed to be anything more than a 6 out of a 10 game anyway. It wasn't supposed to be fucking Jesus Christ in video game form like some people think. That's it. You know, I've ran for nearly 20 minutes about a Sonic series, and I'm just going to leave it there. Fuck fanboys. I'm a Sonic fan. That's it. I'm done. You know. <sighs>